eh, se estimaba que había sido de 8.4. Eh, hay una actualización muy reciente sobre el, eh, la magnitud del sismo, que es de 8.2 grados. Y esto lo convierte en el sismo de mayor magnitud que se haya registrado en nuestro país, al menos en los últimos 100 años. Hemos tenido ya reporte de pérdida de vidas humanas, y de varias afectaciones materiales que todavía no podemos cuantificar y lo habremos de hacer tanto en horas y eventualmente en días cuando sepamos a mayor detalle cuáles fueron los daños que este sismo haya dejado. Mencionaba anteriormente, llueve eh, fuerte, escampa, se mantiene llovina y es y llegar hasta los distintos sitios y nos comenten de lo que ha ocurrido. Destrucciones parciales en Baracoa a propósito. Evidentemente se han deteriorado las condiciones meteorológicas en este municipio, como ya tenemos penetración del mar. No tenemos exactamente eh, las específicamente de la zona del malecón de Baracoa. Ahí vemos cómo las que llegan desde hace solamente unos minutos del municipio de Baracoa. Y más altura de las olas, la altura que alcanzan las olas en los municipios, pero estamos esperando porque nuestros reporteros y colegas que se encuentran en el municipio puedan salir a las calles. De que han sido fuertes, paulatinamente han ido aumentando el oleaje, asimismo las olas, las lluvias también. Suministrado por el Consejo de Defensa, lo que se ha podido precisar es que los vientos son de tormenta tropical. Día para partir hacia los puntos más vulnerables de esta parte del país, que desde horas tempranas ya siente los embates. Por nuestra parte estamos a la espera a que aclare algo para significar es la disciplina de los habitantes de este lugar, donde el 95% More than a half million people have been asked to leave their homes, but here's the problem, a lot of them aren't going anywhere because there just isn't enough fuel in the state for their vehicles. A quarter of filling stations in the state have no gas. Now the state officials say they're working on it, they're trying to get more gas into areas like this so that people can fill up and be prepared. Uh, not only are these half million people under evacuation order, the governor says that people on both coasts of Florida have to be ready because this is a quick moving, quickly moving storm and it could shift and other areas are likely to be affected at short notice. So he's warning Floridians all over the state to be ready to go. Flights are also in huge demand. Many of the airlines are adding additional... And I'm trying to be positive when I talk about these. Let's take a look at Irma first. There you go. You can see the clearly defined eye of the storm making its way towards those northern parts of Cuba. The good news as far as Irma is concerned is that it does look like it is going to avoid the rather more populated eastern side of Florida. But for the here and now, you can see the position of the storm. It'll make its way further north, which as we go on through the next 24 to 30 hours or so, eventually pushing up towards the southwestern corner of Florida, causing problems there as it makes its way further north. Then as we go on through the next couple of days, lots of very heavy rain, the storm surge, of course, major problems in store here. Let's take a look at uh, Jose. That's a sustained winds of around 250 kilometers per hour. I'm hopeful that this one has now peaked. Again, I'm trying to be optimistic here. You can see how close it is to the uh, leewards. It'll make its way further northwards. It'll pull away. It will gradually weaken as we go on through the next 24 hours or so. And then in the case of uh, Katia, well, this system continues to make its way further southwest with sustained winds of around 100 kilometers per hour. It's been downgraded, so this one really is uh, starting to ease off and should cause less problems as we go on through the next couple of days, Adrian. So, as I said, try to be optimistic, but an awful situation here. Indeed, ever since... Hurricane Irma is currently working its way along Cuba's northern coast. Early Friday, with the eye of the storm still well out to sea, it pounded the town of Baraco with tropical storm force winds and six-meter waves. Low-lying areas are flooded and it's without electricity, though there are no reports of serious structural damage. Baracoa has had no electric power since 3 in the morning, and we can't assess how much damage there is until the situation gets better. Preparations continue further along the coast amid fears this region could face the full fury of Hurricane Irma, which could make landfall by Saturday morning.
Todo el mundo está preocupado. Everyone is concerned because we want to preserve our property. Once the cyclone hits, we know what it can do. We all go to safe areas. It's a sparsely populated area with fishing communities and some major tourist resorts, all now empty. 700,000 people have been evacuated, many to shelters, others staying with family or friends. Six dolphins were also evacuated from an aquarium at one of the tourist resorts flown by helicopter to the safer southern coast. Everywhere that's taken a direct hit from Hurricane Irma has seen catastrophic destruction. A number of people have died in this, one of the most powerful Atlantic storms ever recorded. The worst casualties were on the French islands of St. Martin and St. Bart's. The U.S. and British Virgin Islands were also on Irma's direct path where a number of people were killed. Puerto Rico escaped the worst. The storm passed offshore, but it still left a million people without electricity and several dead. The tiny island of Barbuda was nearly destroyed. All the schools, hospitals, hotels and most homes were either damaged or lay in ruins. Now they're about to be hit again. Some storms we feel really confident in the direction that they're moving and others we don't. This has been one all along we've been saying since last week. We don't feel really confident about the direction and we still don't, at least to say where the center of the storm goes, we don't still feel very confident on it. Unfortunately, I wish we did. Uh, we'll feel more confident once it makes a northerly turn, which it has not done uh, still just yet. In fact, it probably won't until tonight. Uh, it, we did not think it would interact with Cuba like it is, but it's been uh, making land fall, the center of it moving along the coast for the last probably uh, about nine hours now, and that is causing, I'm sure, incredible damage right there from the storm. But that said, it's still kind of holding its shape. Hurricane hunters have been in there. Uh, they were in there last night again, and they're still finding all the strong winds. The pressure is still there, and it's going to move back eventually over this really warm water. Here's the latest. If this storm tracks farther towards the west, that puts it over water for longer again, which allows it potentially to strengthen. This water is incredibly warm, but this is a wind forecast. You get the idea by tonight we're going to have hurricane force winds in the keys that is probably going to continue there for about 24 hours hurricane force winds so that is going to cause that prolonged period of the wind is going to cause incredible damage this is tomorrow morning 9 a.m 104 mile an hour winds in key west with this one model I'm looking at, it puts the center of this going right over Key West. That puts all of the storm surge anywhere to the east of it. So we're going to see all of the Keys getting storm surge. Still some storm surge in Miami, although Miami, I will tell you, things are probably looking a little bit better than we thought 24 hours ago. The west side of Florida, not the case. And there are a lot of people on the west side of Florida waking up this morning and seeing these models that have trended farther towards the west. And that's really bad news for Naples, who I think is going to take a huge hit from this up towards Fort Myers, up towards Port Charlotte, up towards Tampa, uh, St. Pete area. The rain's already starting, so the time to move is kind of diminishing now. You, this, you got to wake up this morning, make a decisive move one direction or the other, and then hunker down because we're, uh, we're already seeing the rain. Uh, we're going to see these winds, these winds getting up to tropical storm force already, and it just gets worse for a long time. Guys, because this move is moving towards the north, uh, impacting everybody in Florida, it's going to be a long duration event. It's not going to be in and out, it's going to be a long duration event for them. And the uh, a flying out of the different airports in Florida towards uh, cities up north, but most of them, hundreds of thousands of them, are using the road. They can only go north. Florida's a peninsula. You can't go south. You can't go east or west. You can only go north. And there's only three major highways that can support that traffic. There's I-95, there's 75, and there's the turnpike. So as I say, hundreds of thousands of people are trying to leave Florida, going up north towards the Carolinas and Georgia using these three major highways. Therefore, traffic has been very, very heavy during the past hours. Now it's actually a bit better. I drove up here. We're in Boynton Beach from Miami. It was approximately an hour drive, and I have to say traffic was fluid. That's because most of the people have already left. They're already uh, moving towards the, the Carolinas or Georgia. Some of them are staying in central Florida. And for those that are, are evacuating their homes, but they're staying 
closer to home, they're staying in their towns and their cities. Well, obviously, there's hundreds of shelters across Florida. We heard the mayor of, of Miami-Dade say that they could shelter up to 100,000 people in the city. But we're talking about Miami. That is a big city. We're even going to have stadiums that are going to be used as shelters. But there's, there's loads of, of smaller towns that are using public buildings such as schools, like the one I have behind me here in Boynton Beach. Uh, up to 2,000 people per night can stay in shelters like this one. We have spoken to some of the people that are going to spend the night here, and this is what they had to say. But this is the safest place probably in Boynton for people to, to come to and just uh, feel like, you know, stress reliever, don't have to worry about, you know, uh, the storm. Uh, again, coming here, they'll be totally safe here. We have decided being in, in a shelter is going to be uh, more safe than staying at home. I'm more worried about my life. The, the, the home, I can, I mean, I could get that back. So it's more people life and, you know, I don't want nobody to damage through the storm or their life, lose their life through the storm now. And so I don't worry about floods and, you know, disasters. I'm 69 years old. I'll be 70 in a few. I've lived through it all. I've lived through tornadoes. I've lived through hurricanes here. I, you know, I've bought it all. So, you know, not, I'm not concerned. But I love what they're doing and the way they're doing it this year. So obviously the people are preparing. The authorities are preparing. Everybody knows uh, what a hurricane can do in Florida. We can't forget that they went through Andrew that was a massive hurricane back in 1992. They had Vilma and then uh, more recently Matthew. So people know the drill. They're responsible. Some of them are even overpacking, buying more food that they can eat in a couple of weeks or more water than they can drink or even stacking up with more gas than they actually need. That's a big concern. And that's one side of it. Now everybody's looking at the models to see when and where exactly Irma is gonna is gonna touch. Where is it gonna go? Is it gonna go? There's three, basically three models. One of them suggests that it's gonna go up north uh, on the on the west coast of Florida. That would affect uh, areas like Naples, but it wouldn't affect that much big cities like Miami. Another model is saying that the hurricane would just basically. Uh, cut through the state right in the middle. That would be devastating basically for all areas uh, in southern Florida. And then the third model, the most likely one, uh, is that it's going to go up north on the east side of the coast. That would be devastating for areas like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, densely populated areas. So everybody's uh, um, looking at these models uh, in expectation to see when exactly and where exactly is Irma going to hit. We do know for sure that the state and, and most certainly the southern point of Florida are going to be hit hard by Irma. So hit